What's up guys? Welcome to Natives Fly Fishing, home of also catch cam nets. So check it out. We've got all American made products in here, starting with some fly tying material, this squeamish fly. This stuff is awesome. Wait till you guys tie some streamers with this. We've got a whole lot more material coming from Hairline. We're gonna be a complete Hairline dealer uh, along with some other stuff they carry. Cortland line, if you guys haven't used it, it is the best in the industry. From uh, sink line to floating line to Euro nymphing line, we're gonna carry a lot of Euro nymphing stuff here. Risen, their hooks are great, their boxes are great, their rods are great, the reels are great. Check out Risen fly fishing. We've got our natives apparel coming in. We've got hats and shirts and we'll have decals. We've got some awesome reels here. Taylor reels, if you guys haven't heard of them, Taylor reels are awesome. Matt Taylor's a great dude based out of New Mexico. We've got some more packs here. Uh, this is some of the best floating in the industry, high and dry. By far my favorite, especially for brook trout. Opro stuff, man, these third hand rod holders are a game changer. You can pivot it up so you can keep your rod tip up as you're walking or after you catch a fish. They are fantastic. And then of course some Wingo uh, trout patterns for your dog. Got leashes, got dog collars. And then um, these right here are my personal favorite are a new belt with a bottle opener on it. Never know when you need to crack a cold one. And we got some really cool art from a local artist, Don Kidwell, good friend of mine. He's uh, doing some paintings for us here. We're gonna have some other products come in here in the next week, so get ready for that. Uh, we'll be posting a lot on social media. Come on around back, I'll, got, I'll show you guys uh, the shop. This right here will be eventually more of the fly shop. We're gonna renovate it come next year. But for now, we've got our tying stuff here for uh, our downtimes. We'll sit here, turn over some bugs when we can. And then we've got our shipping station here. Again, this is just temporary. We're just now getting things set up. This here's the, uh, the fab shop for the net. So this is where all the nets are bent. Every single one of them. Doug Matthews has probably dripped uh, gallons and gallons of sweat on this thing right here. Up top here, we've got the evolution of catch cams from day one when I duct taped to an old wooden net to each model that I've tried to improve on. This right here is one solid table that I built. This here is my McDonald's cup from lunch. We've got a uh, white background booth here to take all our product shots in. Saved us thousands of dollars. Come on into my favorite room. The editing dojo. This is my little, uh, little shack. Got some of my personal rods up there. The Mac. Sitting. Edit some cool fishy films. A big brown that my buddy Mike caught up in New York. It was so cool I just uh, printed it out and then epoxied it. And this is the uh, this is the editing dojo. This is where the money is actually made, right here. And then out back, we'll show you another time when we get that all finished up. But this is Natives Fly Fishing and Catch Cam Nuts. This is where we do it all, right here in Fairmont, West Virginia. Hope you guys liked it. Come back again when I get everything in place here in a couple more weeks. Bye for now. So natives fly fishing, you guys have probably wondered where we've been. It's been over two years. We haven't posted, we haven't done anything with it. But we are back and we, are, we have some really cool things in store for you guys. No pun intended, we're sitting here in the new fly shop, the new store here in Fairmont, West Virginia. Uh, we're super excited to bring the apparel back. We got some shirts and hats and our media we're gonna bring back. And uh, the main thing here with natives is to educate people about conservation and the need to take care of our water. So we're going to have some really cool things on educating and the movement and uh, bringing that community back together. 
But just to back up a little bit, to give you guys a little bit of my history, my brother-in-law and I started this project in 2013 as kind of just a little hobby. Um, my brother-in-law, Ben, just graduated film school and wanted to kind of learn some things. He wanted to get, uh, get some content, build up a portfolio, and I was just getting into fly fishing really heavily at that time. It pretty much stole my life. I mean, I grew up spin fishing, you know, worm dunking, power bait with my dad, chasing stock trucks, and I always fished. Um, but when I started fly fishing, it stole my life. So I, I, there was something about fly fishing in general that I was immediately addicted to. Uh, I liked the community of it, uh, the conservation side of it. Uh, I don't know, just the elegance and the class of fly fishing. Uh, everything about it kind of just stole my life. So Ben started following me around with a camera and people started loving the content we put out. And we started out as West Virginia natives, more or less just an Instagram page and a way for Ben to get some content. And that kind of grew. So then we, we went into uh, natives fly fishing and we grew into other states and we took the same kind of concept and logo and we grew into other states with it. And we started doing t-shirts and hats and we put out some really cool films and it was doing great. We loved it. But then things just started getting busy. Life got in the way. Ben started getting a lot more work uh, with his production company. And that's kind of when Catch Cams was born, right? So I duct taped a GoPro onto my old wooden net and I started getting some really cool content with it. So once Catch Cams was born, I was kind of in a dilemma of, uh, you know, what, what to do, what to pursue. And life, uh, it was hard to juggle three things. I had a construction company. Uh, I built some furniture and stuff um, kind of on the side before that. I was building a, a timber cabin with a chainsaw. Uh, I started doing the nets and I started pursuing how to build those. And uh, natives kind of just, um, took the back burner. I got married that summer and, um, you know, life just got in the way and it was something sad to, to put natives to the side, but I knew, I always knew one day I'd bring it back when time was right. It was awesome pursuing catch cams as like a side hustle or, or a second, second income thing for me. Um, I'm, I'm glad I decided to manufacture here instead of going to, to China or somewhere else, we've been able to improve the product um, and just continue to make it better and, and bring out new models and series and stuff with it. And catch cams have been great. So the building we are in, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty sentimental. Um, this was my grandpa's place. So my pap had this place um, back in the 80s. He has a building next door here that he had uh, what they called Four Seasons. He had uh, snowmobiles, four-wheelers, jet skis, and this up here was his parts store. He, he pretty much just kept inventory, and uh, after he closed up, it just became like a warehouse for junk, and uh, Pap was a little bit of a hoarder. If you guys would have seen this place about two months ago, you couldn't even walk in here. The stack to the ceiling of um, just junk. I mean, he kept two by fours and pieces of siding from old contracted and jobs he did and uh, just stacks of bills and papers. <laughs> it was insane. So it took, it good, took a good two, three weeks just to clear this place out. But I, I begged my Pat for this place for years. I told him that uh, I was just planning on renting it out, fixing it up and having it as a little income property but uh, as Pap was getting sicker um, last year, Pap died in October of last year um, from cancer. And as, as it was getting closer to the end of his time, I told him I wanted to open up a fly shop here. And he loved that idea. Pap was an avid fisherman. He only went fly fishing one time down to the Elk River and they talked him into buying a complete Orvis setup, $150 rod and reel and flies. and. I can still hear Pap's story telling me how many trout he caught on the sulfur hatch there that day. He loved it. He loved watching Fly Rod Chronicles. He loved everything about fly fishing. And he loved the idea of me starting a fly shop here. So we worked it out. I bought this place the beginning of this year and decided to completely remodel it. I wasn't just going to fix it up a little bit. I wanted to go all in with it. 
So we, we gutted the thing. We put a whole new um, floor system upstairs down, new floor joists, had to fix the foundation spots, a whole new roof, drywall. We had to rewire the whole place, a whole new HVAC system. Um, and it came together pretty nice. We, I've been at it pretty much by myself with a little bit of help. And uh, it's been about three months now. We're standing here in the fly shop. It's uh, it's pretty cool to know this was my grandpa's place, and it's it's it means even more so that it was. We're just super excited to bring this fly shop to this area. Um, I hope you guys stop by, support us, support locals, or just come in and talk fly fishing with us. We love meeting other people um, and just telling stories of fish we've caught and. Uh, become friends so we'll have a bunch of classes here soon tying events and um, we're going to build this community up so i hope you guys become a part of it thanks